Hey everyone, this is Adam and today I'm going to be showing you how to add personalized content or dynamic content into your HTML emails using the Figma plugin Emailify. So to get started, all we need to do is click on the little resources icon up here, click on that and search for Emailify, so that's E-M-A-I-L-I-F-Y and under the plugins tab you'll see Emailify pop up. All you need to do to run it is either click on this run button here or you can click on the more options icon here and click on save to Figma plugins. So I've already saved the plugin to my list. So I'm just gonna to go to my Figma file, right click anywhere, go down to plugins, then go down to saved plugins and click on the Emailify item. And that's just gonna run the plugin we installed a second ago. So if you're new to the plugin, all you need to do is basically create a new email. So I'm just gonna create a blank email, add that to the page. And then all you need to do is basically go through and add the content that you want. Uh, you can do this by either adding content via the components up here. So you can click on these and add them in, or you can actually just click on uh, the email itself and start adding layers using this little quick add feature. So you can add content rows, you can add elements to those rows, so you can add text layers, uh, image layers, things like that. So for today, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. If you wanna deep dive into how to design and customize your designs in Figma using Emailify, there's a separate tutorial on the YouTube channel. Just go to the playlist for Emailify and you'll see a really detailed video about designing the emails there. Um, for today, I'm just gonna keep it really simple uh, because I want to show you how to make some of this text content dynamic depending on what email platform you're using. So you might be using uh, MailChimp or Klaviyo or a different provider. Uh, if you go to the documentation for Emailify, so that's docs.hypermatic.com slash Emailify. And if you go down to this section called adding platform specific personalization content, uh, this is what we're gonna be going through today. And there's a list of different uh, platforms in here with direct links to the cheat sheets or the documentation for each of the platforms in terms of what their own specific personalization tags or syntax looks like. So for example, if we go to the MailChimp one, that's gonna open up the MailChimp documentation and it's gonna give us a list of all the merge tags, they call them, or personalization tags that you can add to your email. So for example, first name, last name, uh, things like that. Same goes for uh, Klaviyo. So if you wanna use Klaviyo, they've also got personalization variables that look a little bit different. Um, so for today, we're gonna to be focusing on Klaviyo just to keep it simple. So we'll be using the variables for Klaviyo, but bear in mind the process is exactly the same for any of these other platforms or whatever marketing platform you're using, as long as they support personalization tags. So let's get started. Uh, we're gonna keep this really simple today. I'm just gonna add uh, a Klaviyo footer just so we've got that in there. And I'm also just gonna include an image just so we've got an image block in there as well. So I'm just gonna include that and I'm gonna drag that up here. And what we wanna do is basically personalize this welcome message here. So instead of just saying welcome to Jiro, uh, we wanna actually change that to be personalized to the recipient of the email. So as we saw, if we go to the Klaviyo documentation, uh, so you can find that by Googling it or clicking on the link in the docs here. And if you go down to here, you can see that we've got a bunch of personalization variables. So all these are, are really just uh, platform specific template tags that you can use uh, to personalize your content. So this can be pasted anywhere. So I'm just gonna copy paste this first name tag for Klaviyo. I'm gonna jump back into my Figma file and it's basically as simple as pasting it into your text layer wherever you wanna use it. So I'm just gonna add that here and I'm gonna add a little exclamation mark. And so basically what's gonna happen is this tag here, so the curly brackets and the variable inside of it, uh, that's gonna get replaced in Klaviyo with the first name of the person uh, who's on that list. So we'll see what that looks like in a moment. So I'm just gonna keep it really simple for now and upload that to Klaviyo. So to upload the email to Klaviyo or whatever platform, just click on the export HTML button and I've already got Klaviyo selected. Yours might be selected to HTML email. Uh, you can just change the platform to whatever platform you're using. So I've got Klaviyo in there. I've already got my API key in there. If you don't have it, you just click on this little link and copy your API key from Klaviyo. 
So I'm going to upload that now. I'm going to click on upload to Klaviyo, upload that. It's going to generate all the HTML for me, upload all the images for me. And it's telling me that the template has been uploaded. So if we open up the Klaviyo templates link, that'll take us to our email templates list. And you can see here, we've got our sushi email uh, uploaded that was created just now. So to actually use that template, you can go to campaigns, uh, then go to create campaign, make it an email campaign. And we're just going to leave that as default. Uh, you can change what list you want to send it to. So I've just got a test list for today. I'm just going to check that, check the preview list that I've got set up and then go to continue to content. And I'm going to click on the drag and drop option here and go to my templates and then click on the sushi email template. So you can see here, this is our HTML that we just designed in Figma and uploaded to Klaviyo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on use template. So I've just clicked that and that's going to use this template for our current campaign. So you can see it's got all the HTML there. You don't need to worry about that. All you need to do is um, basically preview this email and we're going to do that by clicking on the preview email button. And then we're going to uh, show directly in Klaviyo. So we're going to preview the email in Klaviyo and click preview now. And you can see that it's previewing, previewing the template as Adam, which is me. Uh, so that's taking, taking it from my list or taking it from my account. And I'm going to click on preview now. And you can see here that when we preview the email using that feature uh, and loading in the data or the customer attributes or user attributes from that uh, list or that account, uh, you can see that the template we added in Figma, so we've got this first name variable here. All we did was add that as a, a bit of text to our Figma text layer. And because that's getting exported as HTML using the Emailify plugin in Klaviyo, we can see here that uh, it's being dynamically swapped out with the name of that person, uh, which in this case is me. So there we go. We've basically got our name swapped out dynamically. So it's loading in my name instead of the template tag that we added in Figma. So that dynamic tag is being swapped out in Klaviyo. Again, you have to use whatever the variable or whatever the personalization tag is per platform. So if we wanted to do this for MailChimp, we would copy in this tag instead of the Klaviyo tag. So it would look like that for MailChimp. But in this case for Klaviyo, it looks like this. Um, so that's basically what it looks like. As I said, you've got the HTML exported as we'd expect uh, from Figma and you've got the template tag swapped out. And of course you can do more than just add um, names. So if you wanted to add email address, phone number, organization, uh, you can also add defaults. So if there's no name, you can actually just change this to have a fallback. So for example, we could do this we could add this tag. And instead of saying the first name, uh, we can basically say, uh, so if we change that to hello, and instead of the first name, if the first name doesn't exist, uh, this default will basically change it to fall back to the word there. So instead of saying hello, Adam, it would say hello there. Um, so that's an option you can do. It's probably a good idea to do that in case uh, the customer or the user data isn't complete and doesn't have their first name. You can add things like fallbacks. So again, you just need to go through the documentation and see what is supported. Um, there's all different custom properties you can add, uh, account variables. So you've got event variables, which can be really handy. So if you want to do things like uh, dynamic shopping carts, for example, you can do that. So you can, you can create these events in Klaviyo specifically, and I believe this works with Shopify. So you can basically create uh, things like abandoned carts. So if there's a abandoned cart event, you can actually create uh, these variables inside of your email to swap out with those abandoned cart um, items or product items. And you can also use these variables in images as well. So for example, if we swap in, let's go to the ecom one and we swap in an ecom example. So we just added a really basic ecom example here. And if you wanted to make this image uh, variable dynamic, you can click on the image layer here. So you can see we've clicked on the image layer, go to HTML and mobile settings in the plugin. So click on that button. And what you can do is you can basically paste in your variable 
into this override image source. So what this is gonna do is instead of linking to the image in Figma, you can make it override that image source with a uh, static URL, or you can use variables in that URL. So that might look something like, uh, let's see here. So we've got uh, images. So for example, it might be something like, uh, you know, HTTP, uh, you know, Shopify, it's not going to be this, but shopify.com slash assets. And then you might have something like item dot image name or something like that. So obviously this is a fake example, but the point is that we're mixing in a dynamic tag into the URL and it might actually even just be a variable on its own. So the platform might just inject that variable. Again, you have to look up what these variables are, um, but that's the way that you can override the image source. If you want to do dynamic images, uh, you can do that. Um, the same thing goes for links. So if you wanted to add a clickable link with some dynamic content, you can definitely do that as well. So we might do uh, example.com and maybe you want to pass like a variable to that. So you could do name equals and then add in something like first name. And this will allow you to have a clickable link where the variable also gets included into the link. So if you were to click on that image, it would go to example.com uh, query string name equals Adam in this case. So that's a way that you can do dynamic link URLs and dynamic image sources. Uh, you could also do it for image alt text. So if you wanted to put the product name in there, uh, again, I don't know what the variable would be, but it'd be something like item product name, and that would make a dynamic alt text as well. So you can really use these dynamic tags anywhere that text is available. So you could do this on buttons. You could make a dynamic button. Again, you could add uh, the name into there. So we could do uh, first name. And that would basically populate my name into the button. So that's roughly what it would look like. Uh, again, we can get rid of uh, these because they're not going to do anything. Um, but if we re-upload this email, so I'm just going to upload that to Klaviyo again. We'll jump back into Klaviyo, knowing that it's going to be finished in a second. And we'll go back to content. And we're going to do change template. So I'm just going to use the new template that we're uploading now. So that's finished uploading. Uh, and I'm going to go to drag and drop. I'm going to go to my templates and I'm going to click on this new template. Uh, so as you can see, we've got our tags as we'd expect. So in the button and in the title now, I'm going to click on use template and go to preview and preview email, show in Clavio and preview now. And there we go. You can see now that the button also has a dynamic variable in it as well as in the title. Uh, so as I said, basically anywhere where there's a text layer or a link or alt text, um, or a custom property like on the images, you can use these variables based on the platform that you're using to populate this data. So it can be really powerful. Uh, if you really get fancy with it, you can do other things like uh, include conditionals, conditional statements. Um, so this allows you to do things like if else blocks. So you can do some crazy stuff like uh, copy these if else statements. And if you click on your email, uh, so the email if I frame and then click on the quick add option and click on custom code. So add custom code, we can add that. And that's going to add this special layer here where you can actually drop in custom code. So I'm going to paste in this conditional statement and I'm just going to drag that up to here. And then I'm going to add another one. So I'm just going to add another custom code layer. And if we go back to here, we can do an end if. Again, this is going to vary depending on what platform you're using. The templating language will be different. Um, but if you dig into the docs, the documentation, uh, you'll be able to find out what this looks like per platform. Um, so again, this is a custom code wrapper. And what this does is it, it injects raw uh, template code or custom code in between the rows. So this allows you to basically create uh, dynamic rows. So in this case, this row will only show up if the person uh, is interested in dogs and not interested in cats. So this is a very uh, specific example. Obviously they're just giving you a potential use case. 
you could change this logic to be whatever you want. Uh, you could change it to be uh, location based. You could change it to be name based, organization based, or tier based, depending on what kind of uh, customer they are. And you can basically use these tags to uh, dynamically inject or in and swap out uh, content. So you could do end if. You could also do else. Uh, so if we do else, uh, you could you could basically add that in there, and we could create a different block. So if we just duplicate this block and pop it between those tags, uh, we could do else. So this is a terrible name for a product, but uh, you can see what I mean. So in this case, if the person is interested in dogs, uh, then this block would show up. Um, else, if they're not interested in dogs, um, then everyone else will get this block here. And then end if kind of closes off that wrapper. So if we just close up these on the left here, it gives us a really quick look at what that looks like. So you've got a custom code block here. That's the if, so that's the condition. Then you, you're going to inject this block if that condition matches. Else, if it doesn't match, show everyone else this block here and then end that condition. So this, this area now is now conditional. Um, so again, you can explore this in detail. I'm not covering this uh, in detail at all. It's, you know, it's basically up to you what you use those conditions for. Uh, and again, this is going to differ depending on what platform you're using. So if you're using MailChimp, it's going to look quite different. Uh, I don't know where the conditional, uh, we can find it. Conditional merge tax, here we go. Um, so there's going to be some details in here about how to use conditionals as well. And you basically want to dig into the documentation based on the platform you're using. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good overview of conditional tags, how they work, and specifically how they work with emails that are designed in Figma using the Emailify plugin. Uh, again, it's really simple. All you have to do is find the conditional tags or the merge tags that you want to use. And if they're text-based, so like a name or something like that, you can just drop them into a text layer in your Emailify layers. Uh, again, you can use them for button labels and you can use them for um, links. You can use them for dynamic image tags. Anywhere where you can use text, you can use these uh, dynamic tags. And then, of course, as we just went through, these special tags here are dynamic tags. So you can use these tags um, for code blocks. Um, but you can also use them for just regular text layers as well. So you can actually just drop these in here. If you don't want to do a section based or a block based approach and you just actually want to uh, do conditional uh, text. So if we do conditional text and then end if. Okay, that's what it looks like. Um, so again, this would be conditional inside of that text layer. So you could do uh, if interested in dogs or cats, and then you could do so uh, dogs and then else cats. So we could do cats. Um, so that would basically mean that inside of this text layer, uh, if that condition is met, it will, it will show the word dogs, else it'll show the word cats. Um, so that's another way you can do it. If you want to do it inside of a text layer, that's possible as well. Um, but if you want to use it in a block layer context, so swapping out entire rows, then using that code uh, snippet or code block that we went through before is going to be the way to go. Okay, so I think we'll leave it there. I don't want to go too deep into it. I just wanted to go over the general principles and general fundamentals of uh, how dynamic text works in email platforms, uh, in this case, specifically Klaviyo. But as I said, check out the documentation on the Emailify page, on the documentation page, and you'll get a list of all the different uh, templating links per platform. So whatever marketing platform you're using, you really just need to dive deep into those documentation pages and figure out how to use those to the best of your ability to customize the content in your own designs for whatever platform you're using. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, I've had quite a lot of questions about dynamic content tags, uh, dynamic content in general, uh, as, it, as it pertains to marketing platforms. So I hope this is a bit of a good 101 introduction into customizable email content in email platforms using the Emailify Figma plugin. So thank you as always for watching and we'll be back soon with more Figma tutorials like this one very soon.